anybody on this planet. I don't deserve all the goodness he's given me. So, once again, I got asked by Fred to come and speak today, and the first thing I said to myself was, I don't want to do this. <laughs> and, of course, when God speaks to me, it's always thought to thought, and I know it's him. And he says, you don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> and I always go to Jeremiah. The first time I actually spoke, it was probably a group about this size, and it was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I had just done a, a show at Deborah Sweeten at Oral Roberts University, which was terrifying. <laughs> it wasn't like this, where they spend 15 hours with you and edit out all the bawling and the, <laughs> all the stuff they don't want you to see. <laughs> it was live. <laughs> And so after, she asked if I'd like to speak, and I didn't want to do that either. <laughs> so the night before, um, I couldn't sleep. I thought, like, God, I'm not worthy of this. I'm so not worthy to share God's word. I'm not a preacher. He goes, but you're my daughter. And so I went to sleep, and I woke up, and I, you know, I woke up. It's like, I got an appointment with the Lord. I got to go talk to the Lord. And... Um, I cried and I read scripture and I prayed and I had like six pages of notes of what I was going to talk about. And I'm sitting there and I'm scared to death and he, I, I'm just looking around the motel room and he goes, circular file. And I'm like, what? And I heard it again, circular file. And I sat down and I looked at my notes and I looked down next to me and was a round garbage can. <laughs> what? <laughs> so I threw all my notes away. <laughs> so today I'm here with no notes, <laughs> as you see. But this is the word he gave me. And it's so profound knowing how he loves us. He loved us before we were even in the mommy's womb. Amen. And I'm in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. It says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Boy, did he know me. He knew everything I was going to go through in life. Before you were born, I sanctified you. And I had to look that up. And I'm a writer. <laughs> and it, sanctified is every day his mercies are new. Every day we walk in newness. So no matter how many mistakes I still make, I get up every morning and I'm like, thank you. Praise the Lord, it's a new day, and yesterday he has forgotten. He says, I ordained you a prophet to the nations. I am not a prophet, but he has ordained me from before I was born to be where I'm at right now. And then, of course, Jeremiah says, Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. And I felt like such a babe in the Lord because I didn't come back to him all those years till 2006. And so I had so much to learn. And here I was speaking in 2010 in Tulsa. And I felt very unworthy. And the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth or a babe in the Lord. For you shall go to all to whom I send you. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces. <laughs> The first time I ever spoke, it wasn't for God, it was for a big conference. And um, I got up front to introduce a doctor, and I smiled, and my lip went like that. I was like, <laughs> I'm, like I'm not a speaker. <laughs> he says, do not be afraid of their faces. So now when I get up, I look at the faces that God puts in front of me. And he says, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Uh, he has delivered me from a lot of things, and perfection is not one of them. But after I gave my heart to the Lord, and I went through all that garbage of 20 years, 26 years, I think I was just party animal, rebellion. I, I went through a lot of hurt and a lot of pain with four divorces. I married again. And I met th this man in a church. And so I trusted but somewhere along the line, before, like three days before we got married, there was a warning sign from God, and I didn't listen to it. That marriage ended tragically in four months. And I ended up selling my business. Um, well, that, that's later. I, I just opened a brand new business. Ended up sleeping in my business to get on my feet after that 
uh, separation. I was completely devastated. We had tried to get back together, you know, by the Lord and everything, and my pastors were real protective over me. Well, I decided that I needed to just stay single. And so I tried to just stay where I was at. Things started looking good, and then I got hit by a car riding my bike to work. This was the devastating thing that um, really pissed me off of the Lord, <laughs> so to speak. I was so mad. I says to God, this was your chance to take me home, and I lived. I broke multiple bones in my body. I had a head trauma, and I ended up losing everything and moving in with my children. Who wants to live with their children? <laughs> and a daughter-in-law, and a, a four-year-old granddaughter who was very busy, and I was very injured. But um, I had to humble myself, and I moved in. I wanted to die. I literally wanted to die again, like I did that video. And one morning, I'm playing with Maya, my little granddaughter. She's eight now, by the way, beautiful young gal. And I'm playing Barbies with her on the floor. And out of the mouth of babes, four years old, she says, Grandma. And I go, yes, Maya. I'm just exhausted from all this. I'm, it's only like two months out of my accident. She looks up at me and she says, I'm glad you didn't die. Oh. And I just said, I'll be right back. <laughs> I went in the bathroom and I bawled. And I looked in the mirror and I says, you're not done with me yet. <laughs> and I began to live. And um, nine months later, I had my second surgery on my leg, and I snowboarded that winter. Praise God. Yeah. So with that, I've, I've just been seeking the Lord. And during that time of healing, I had wrote a book. I have that book here, not the full on empty, but my second book, it's called Full on Trust. And I wrote it prior to remarrying. And it was, God would wake me up at five in the morning and say, get up, you have an appointment with the king. I was like, whoa, okay. So I'd get up and I would just sit and I'd put uh, soaking music on. And I would read a little scripture and I'd just pray and I'd, I'd make a list of little things, big things, whatever. And, and then I would get quiet and I realized he would start speaking to me. And I had a journal, and I would just put my hand on the paper and wait for it to start going. And I wrote what he would speak to me. And I didn't care what it, what it was, what was hitting that paper, because nobody saw it but me. And so I did this for like 60 days. He, every morning for two months, God woke me up to write down what he told me to write down. It ended up becoming a published book. And I call it the 60 days of devotions to the Lord. It's all about trusting him. And, you know, it was great. I reread that book like seven times throughout the uh, years I had it, you know, and then going through editing with my publisher, I had to read it, you know, multiple times. But when I had this accident, I wanted to die. After Maya said that to me, I'm glad you didn't die. I picked that book up and I looked at it and I thought, I didn't write this for other people. God wrote it for me. He wrote it through me, for me. And I wanted to throw it off a cliff at that time. Mm -hmm. I did not want to open that book back up because I had to trust him with my life. There was nothing worse than having 6,000 pounds of metal <coughs> fling you 20 feet in the air and have you bounce around on the pavement at 54 years old. <laughs> I remember laying in the pavement and I'm looking up, and the little dog in the video, he's still with me, his name is Ruben. He was on the back of my bike. And I remember laying in the pavement, trying to get up, realizing I can't move. I'm paralyzed, something's wrong, everything hurts, and I couldn't breathe. Once I caught my breath and the pain came in, and I remember people running towards me, I couldn't hear anything, but I could feel everything. And this man laid in the pavement with me, and his name was Neil, and he was bald, stark bluish green eyes and he says I saw what happened because I'm a cyclist oh and I'm a paramedic but I'm not on duty and he laid there and he made me keep my eyes open because I was trying to go under and he kept me awake until the ambulance came this man disappeared and nobody could find him 
nobody could find who he was, where he was, anything after this accident. And so he was my angel that laid in the pavement with his face on the pavement cheek to cheek with me. I'll never forget it. So when I opened my, reopened my book for the first time after this accident, it was like I never wrote it. I don't remember anything I had read or wrote. And I started reading it again and again. And it literally healed me. And I even have a doctor that was shocked. He says, you are a star patient. I've never had anybody heal like you. And I says, I didn't heal myself. God healed me. Mm -hmm. Yes, and through all this, he really spoke to me about getting my life right over and over. Every day I wake up and go, oh, why did I do that yesterday? Or why did I say that last week? You know, you, we run around and we try to be perfect, but all he wants is our worship. <coughs> and I had dollar bills as my markers in here, and I gave them up tonight. So I hope I find them. I was like, that's why I put the money in there. So I don't know where everybody's at with the Lord as far as the days that we live in. How many people believe in pre-rapture? Yeah, pre pre-trib rapture. Thank you. How many are mid-trib? And how many are post-trib? Good. <laughs> well, he's been speaking to me for the last two years about how imminent he, his return is. A lot of people think the second coming of Christ is him coming in the clouds and he's only going to come once. The rapture is a total different thing. It sounds like a, like something out of a fairy tale. You, know, you, you hear about people disappearing, but... He showed me some scriptures that he wanted me to share. And the reason I need to share these is because if we're not ready for his coming, we're going to miss it. And we're not appointed to wrath. We are not appointed to wrath. And when this tribulation takes place, which is so imminent with everything that's going on in our world, it's going to be horrible, and it's going to be unbelievable, and people are going to cave in. They're, I mean, it's... And if it is pre-trib, or if it's mid-trib or post-trib, will you lose your faith? Will you trust him that he will take you through it? It's going to be ugly. But there's always the but. And I found the buttons in the Bible. <laughs> and I'm on Luke 21, and it's the importance of watching. So, but take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Mm -hmm. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape. There's that word, escape. All these things that will come to pass. Mm -hmm. And to stand before the Son of Man. Now, he prayed that. That's in red letters. That's Jesus' words. Pray that you will be counted worthy. Oh, every morning I cry. I'm like, oh, God, am I worthy? Am I worthy? You know, and I, I worry and I repent. I worry and I repent. God said, stop crucifying me. I already did it. It was finished on the cross. But we still need to pray every day that he doesn't leave us behind and that we are counted worthy. A lot of people will tell you, oh, I hope I find my spot soon, sorry. I'm not as nervous as I thought I'd be. <laughs> this is in First, Second Peter, chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. What does a thief do? He, he comes, no, he comes secretly. He comes quietly in the night. We don't know if he's going to come day or night or morning or whatever. But a thief comes. When Jesus comes for the second coming, he doesn't come as a thief. He comes in the clouds where everybody will see him. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess at that point that are left on the earth. But when he comes for his bride, he will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away and a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. 
Oh, that's scary. <laughs> and both in the earth and the works that are in it will burn up. Now when the tribulation begins, it's going to begin with fire and brimstone falling from the sky. And I don't know if anybody's aware of what's coming right now to this earth. We have Planet X. And it talks about the, the woman with the moon at her feet. And she's pregnant. And the dragon at her head. And she has seven stars at her head by the dragon. This planet, if you look at it through a telescope, looks like a dragon with wings and it has seven planets that orbit it, which are like big stars. The woman pregnant is Virgo and she has a planet. And when that planet moves out, the brown dwarf, they're saying the earth is gonna have mega earthquakes. The revelation is not like what we thought it was. It's, it's, everything's lining up right now for the tribulation to begin and the church to be removed. Now Satan cannot take over this earth until the Holy Spirit's gone. We are holding it back. So that's why I'm a big believer in the pre-trib um, rapture. Let's see if I can find my next mark. Revelation chapter 3, he talks about the dead church. So many people need to wake up. Myself included. He's shaken me to my core of his second coming. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. I always picture repent falling on the altar, crying, bawling. <laughs> repent. That's another word I looked up just to make sure. It means to turn away. To turn away from the ways of the world. If we are here when the mark of the beast comes before he takes us, Will you cave in? Will you, will you keep your faith? Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief. There is that word again. If you don't watch for me, I will come as a thief. So those who don't think he's coming, there's Christians right now today that don't think he's coming yet, he will come as a thief. And you will not know what hour I will come upon you. It's going to be quick. It's going to be a blink. There it is. And here it is again. Revelation 16, verse 15. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. He translated that. He gave me that word and said, what do you mean by lest we walk naked? If you get left behind, people are going to say, well, you're a Christian. Why are you still here? You're left naked. You will be ashamed. So my word today is short and sweet because we serve a God that loves us. That last song, it is well with my soul. Every day I don't doubt his mercy for me. I wouldn't be alive from that car. He's not done with me yet. <laughs> and then Tara said, this is, what did you say, Tara? A new thing. Yes. And that is a confirmation that he gave me. It was, you know, we're, you're starting over every day. He's not done with me. So it, it doesn't matter what we've done. What matters is what we do now. And I've had crazy dreams since February 20th. And I would come to my best friend here, Lou. Lou, I had this another crazy dream. I'd just be like, oh, I'm just like, oh my gosh. Oh. And I didn't know what to think of it. I'd write it down and I'd get my dream book, my biblical dream book out. And it just kept pointing to sharing with people the importance of what's happening. In other words, he's pointing me to ministry, and I'm like, not now, Lord. <laughs> not now. And he says, yes, now. The time's short. And I, the last dream I had, and the funny thing about this last dream, I've had a dream since. 
It's been over a week. And I was having dreams every other day for two months. And I've got them all written down in a journal. All the keywords that I've been trying to figure out and interpret these dreams, which include keywords and numbers. I want to go to that conference so I can figure out my dreams better. But I'm going to share this last dream because it's something he spoke to me and why I needed to be here tonight. And it's a crazy dream. I'm not going to go into all the details, but I was with in a car with a guy that I know in real life, and we were having an argument, and you know how dreams can just be very real and very fragmented. And all of a sudden, I, he stops, I get out of the car, and he, I have a paper bag in my hand, and he goes, you're crazy. I says, no, it's for God. And I get out, and, and I'm talking to this bag, and I'm realizing that there's two souls in this bag. And I'm like, oh. That's really weird. I'm thinking, am I going to wake up? But I was dreaming, am I going to wake up? Instead, I started running down this corridor with this bag, going up and down stairs, trying to get this bag to the airport. And these little souls inside said, if you don't hurry up, we're going to cancel our subscription. <laughs> I don't know what that meant. OK, but this is what it said. So I'm running to this, this airport. I'm supposed to get these souls on the airplane, because God said, once they're, you're in flight, they can't kick them off. And so I get to the airport, and you know how when you go through bus terminals, whatever you have, or concerts and stuff, you go through those little gates that you push through. I go through, and the scanner says, your, your passport doesn't work because it's not working. And this, this gal goes, run, go, just go get on the jet. And so we get on the jet, and, and I realize, oh, they're safe. They're in. And I woke up. So the airport represents ministry. And getting on the airplane represents that new beginning, taking off a flight. But it also represents with those new souls, I feel like there's a couple people here today that need to rededicate or dedicate, if they haven't already, their life back to Jesus because he's coming. And he doesn't want anybody, anybody, to miss the flight. <laughs> Because it's going to be a glorious flight. Amen. And if there's anything, I mean, every day I have to come back to him. Every day I have to. And sometimes we're stubborn. Sometimes we just keep going about our day and not thinking about how important it is to put him first, Amen. no matter what anybody says. And I don't know what anybody's been through in life, but I know that he's delivered me from a lot of pain, number one, and a lot of heartache. And he's taught me I don't have to be perfect because the blood is always, has, it will always cover me. He knows our hearts, but he also knows we're stubborn because we're, we're flesh. So if anybody wants prayer, I'm all about it. Amen. And another favor I have to ask, I have a friend, since you guys are all prayer warriors, she's in the, going to be in the hospital in the morning. She has scoliosis, and they're going to do dangerous surgery on her back tomorrow. And her name is Bobby, so we've got Bob and Fred. <laughs> and um, I just ask that you all pray for her tonight, just, even if it's a one sentence prayer or a one minute prayer. Yeah. Your prayers will reach the heavens before you're finished. That's how fast they travel. Mm -hmm. So, okay. let's do that. Let's just agree. Amen. Our speakers come here, so we're going to give back and we're going to agree. And Lord God, we just thank you. Yes, Jesus. Jesus. God, our healer. We thank you that uh, Bobby is yours. Yes. And that you have done the work. Yes. And we thank you right now that uh, you be glorified in her body right now. We just thank you for your glory to come down and just amaze the doctors yes. that there will be a testimony of your your amazing yes. grace and glory in Bobby's body tonight yes. in Jesus name in Jesus name yeah I just feel like there's a couple people that need to come up and pray with me I don't know who you are
are. <laughs> so, well, we'll open, open up for uh, ministry time. Anybody who doesn't, um, who needs prayer for anything, we're here for you. Um, she can pray for you, and we can pray for you. So, I um, just want you to know God loves you all so much. Yes. 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 Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you.